Hey there and welcome! I'm Lily and this video is part of my larger acne series. If you enjoy this video and find it informative, I highly recommend you take a look at the rest of the series. You'll learn a lot about what causes acne, why it's kind of a big deal, and why topical treatments will never cure chronic acne. You'll also learn what you can do to stop or hugely reduce your breakouts. So make sure you click these thingies that show up from time to time and look in the description below for links. Let's get to it! These foods are the absolute worst foods because they, or their ingredients, straight up cause acne. And it will serve you well to do your best to avoid, or in most cases, completely remove them from your diet. We'll start with the best of the worst. Number 10, spicy foods. This one definitely doesn't apply to everyone and is more from the realm of Eastern philosophy. In the older medical modalities like Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine, those who suffer from acne were seen as having an excess of heat or too much pitta. Under such circumstances, it was important for a person to abstain from spicy foods, like chili peppers, garlic, onions, scallions, and other hot tasting foods. While such abstinence can be really helpful in some cases, oftentimes there are other bigger underlying issues that have to be addressed before major improvement in breaking out is shown. Next up at number nine, alcohol. We all pretty much know that alcohol isn't good for us, but it's definitely not good for the clarity of your skin. You've probably noticed that horrid, sallow, gray look that you take on the morning after a bender. Or you're 14 and you haven't learned that yet, don't start drinking. That zombie-like pallor is due in large part to the heavy hit alcohol inflicts on your circulatory and detoxification systems. You might have heard that one drink can relax your blood vessels and increase blood flow to the skin, which is why some people tend to flush when drinking. However, that effect is reversed after the second drink, impeding adequate blood flow, which is vital to skin health. Additionally, alcohol is cytotoxic, so any cell that's exposed to alcohol is subject to poisoning, which is why your liver and kidneys have to work so hard to detoxify your body after you drink. Your liver and kidneys are responsible for the brunt of your body's detoxification, and I tell you what, they have one hell of a job nowadays. They don't need any extra work piled on. Cause do you know what happens when your liver and kidneys are stressed and can't manage their detox duties? Yeah, the burden of purging toxins is passed on to your skin, which is a direct cause of breakouts. Additionally, alcohol is very dehydrating, a horrible state to be in for skin health and detoxification. On top of that, many people don't realize that alcohol has a significant impact on hormonal balance, which every girl with PMS breakouts knows is a big and annoying deal for skin clarity. Next on the list at number eight, nuts. I thought nuts were health food, no? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. All nuts and seeds are pretty high in fats and proteins, and foods high in fats and proteins tend to increase levels of inflammatory cytokines, like arachidonic acid. As the name suggests, arachidonic acid causes inflammation, which triggers acne. There are a lot of great nutrients in nuts and seeds too, including some essential fatty acids. So even if you suffer from acne, it's fine to include small amounts of nuts and seeds in your diet. Just be wise about the source. Fresh nuts and seeds are generally great. The problem is that most nuts and seeds sold to us are God only knows how old and most of the time covered in barbecue honey mustard ranch clusters. These kinds of nuts, due to light, heat exposure, and age, are almost certainly rancid as fuck. And a lot of the times they're covered in so much MSG and sodium laden crap that any potential health benefit is canceled out. When you decide to eat fresh nuts and seeds, keep it relatively small, like a tablespoon or two worth and make sure that they're as fresh as possible and unflavored. The seventh worst food for acne, coffee and energy drinks. Okay. Everyone who drinks one or less cups of black coffee per day and knows that energy drinks are the devil's Kool-Aid, put your hand up. You guys, this applies to you less, but still some. 
oral intake of food and drinks containing caffeine, including coffee, energy drinks, soda, strong chocolate, and even green tea, increases levels of the stress hormone cortisol, which triggers inflammation and increases production of skin oils both of which directly contribute to acne breakouts and can speed skin aging. Caffeine is also generally considered to be a diuretic, which means it increases bodily fluid output, which increases your risk of dehydration. So if you're not one of those people who put their hand up a minute ago, you're acknowledging that you probably have your coffee sweetened and or partake of the devil's Kool-Aid. That sugar isn't doing the cortisol and inflammation any favors. And oh my god, do not get me started on the dietary atrocity that is artificial sweeteners. So you can just put that sugar-free high horse out to pasture right now. Super long story short, energy drinks are poison with no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Period. Done. End of story. Coffee, I'll admit, has some pretty cool sounding antioxidant power, but I and many dermatologists are of the opinion that it's just not worth it, especially if you have chronic acne. And unfortunately, decaffeinated coffee appears to have the same cortisol spiking effect and can come with its own creepy toxicity baggage. How do they get the caffeine out? Google it. Where I'm willing to concede is with green and white tea. They're a lot lower in caffeine than coffee and they have some major antioxidant superpowers. And you'll notice I did specify that oral intake of caffeine causes skin issues. This isn't to imply that anal intake of caffeinated beverages doesn't, though there are some people who do that. I'm not one of them. The distinction I was making is that topical caffeine has become a popular ingredient in skincare products, and there's little evidence to indicate whether or not topical caffeine can trigger breakouts. So if you're prone to breakouts and you've successfully used topical caffeine, let us know in the comments section below. The sixth worst food for acne, candy, soda, cakes, donuts, chocolate. These foods are pretty much fat, plus refined sugar, which equals blood sugar dysregulation, which equals spiked insulin, which equals spiked cortisol, which equals inflammation. Yep, we all knew it, didn't we? Refined sugar, refined white flour, and refined fats are bad for us. <laughs> they cause inflammation, they cause diabetes, they cause arterial hardening. Unfortunately, they also taste delicious. So I guess this is the time in your life when you get to be super mature and choose which is more important to you, clear skin or donuts, healthy blood sugar regulation or the development of metabolic disorders, steady weight gain until you end up in a coffin the size of which was recently invented or relatively effortless weight maintenance for the entirety of your life. I know, I know. Adulting is bullshit, and no, life isn't fair. Never has been, never gonna be. The other issue with super processed junk food is that usually the natural plant fibers have been removed to increase palatability and ease of swallowing. And no fiber equals slow digestive transit time equals poop sitting in your guts equals toxin overload. Those poop toxins, be they chemicals, metabolic wastes, pathogenic bacterial toxicity, fecal mutagens, or excess hormones are absorbed straight into your bloodstream and have to be neutralized and filtered by your liver. Again. When your liver is stressed and can't detox effectively, the rest goes to your skin, causing breakouts. So I'll just uh, leave you to ponder what's putrefying in your intestines right now. Gross. Fifth worst food for acne. Protein shakes, meal replacement bars, and processed protein-rich foods. Ugh, protein! I was obsessed with getting enough protein in my I just wanna be skinny so guys like me years. <laughs> because protein makes you skinny, right? Well, that is what the dieting industry told us, which is now being parroted back to us by the medical industrial complex. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Unfortunately, eating a lot of high protein and high fat foods does make you lose weight really fast, which is usually gained back really fast too, because high protein diets are just a clever way of starving yourself. But since we're specifically talking about acne, let's just address how these high 
high protein products cause acne. A lot of these products are higher in protein than any food is found in nature. To do this, they must contain isolated protein supplements like whey protein concentrate, casein, the remarkably dangerous protein found in milk, and isolated soy protein, among others. But here's the thing. Body doesn't store extra protein as it does carbs or fat, so any protein that you eat has to be broken down into individual amino acids and used right away or expelled from the body. As humans, we need roughly between 40 and 80 grams of protein per day depending on our size. I'm like 45! Anything above that is excessive. An acidic protein that's excessive has to be eliminated via the urine, which incurs a heavy tax on your poor little kidneys. Just like your liver, when your kidneys can't detoxify adequately because they're under constant assault from excessive protein consumption. Your skin picks up the detox slack. Hello, breakouts. And yes, excess protein is stored as body fat in a roundabout way. First, the protein has to be metabolized into amino acids and ammonia, which is highly toxic to the filtration units of your kidneys. Then the excess carbon components of that protein are stored as fat. Excess protein of any kind also initiates a sharp spike in the production of insulin-like growth factor 1, or IGF-1, which pretty much feeds cancer. And it stimulates the sebaceous glands in your skin to produce more oil. Problem for acne. So yeah, screw you Atkins, you lying sack of bacon. The fourth worst food for acne is greasy faux Chinese food. And I call it faux Chinese because the disgusting crap we sell here in America is a horrendous bastardization of the vibrantly healthy traditional Chinese diet. We've all had greasy Chinese, so let's start there. It's greasy. I don't know why doctors ever tried to claim that the grease that we eat does not turn into skin grease. Oh no, you know, I do know why, and it was based on one flawed study from the 1950s. Because it does. The grease you eat absolutely does become skin grease. And that skin grease clogs pores, it changes the skin pH, and it feeds pathogenic bacteria. The large amount of dietary fat also stimulates the production of sex hormones, which also increase skin oil production. All that bloody fat thickens your blood and reduces circulation to the skin, too. It's just bad news all around. What we also know about greasy fake Chinese food is that more often than not, it's filled with MSG. Either straight up MSG or MSG disguised as modified yeast extract or natural flavors. MSG is a neurotoxin. It ruins your taste buds because it's molecularly smaller than table salt and has the capacity to get into your taste buds and to your bloodstream with remarkable ease. It creates a huge dopamine release, just like drugs, white sugar, and added fat. And it's an excitotoxin, which means it stimulates your neurons to fire, and fire, and fire, and fire, which can result in neuron death. MSG is also toxic to your liver, and I know you want to think highly of your local restaurateurs, like, oh no, they're good people, they would never use MSG, or the menu says all natural and homemade, so they don't use MSG. But they do. They all do. We also know that a lot of the ingredients used in greasy, gross, fake Chinese food are highly refined. White flour, added sugar, fried white rice, ick. It's the perfect recipe for blood sugar and hormone disruption. And if that weren't enough, many of the noodles and wonton wrappers are made with hydrogenated oils, i.e. big bad trans fat now known to be a major initiator of acne breakouts. In some cases, these foods are even made with petroleum byproducts. You don't just shit this stuff out unharmed, people. You are what you eat. Third worst food ever for acne. I want to be totally clear. Pizza is proof that God exists and he is kind. I mean pizza. Oh my god, pizza. How was something so perfectly delicious created? The smell, the taste, the texture, the post-pizza food coma, it's all so perfect. I mean, I say this from memory because I haven't had a real slice of pizza in, like, probably a decade. Welcome to Responsible Adult Choices 101. Cause, you see, pizza makes my face break out. And let's break down why. The worst offender is the cheese. Cheese? is a real motherfucker. Because the protein in cheese, casein, beyond being a potent agent of cancer initiation, is a known and common trigger of acne breakouts. It causes impressive spikes in insulin and inflammation, and, and, when it's metabolized, it produces morphine-like, highly addictive compounds called casomorphins. It's part of nature's brilliant design to keep babies from wandering too far away from their dealers. 
I mean mothers. Casein is also one of the most powerful stimulants of insulin-like growth factor, which promotes growth, i.e. cell division, i.e. the thing that makes tumors go from, my immune system can totally take care of that, to three months left to live. Insulin-like growth factor one, along with insulin and sex hormones, both of which increase with dairy intake, is also responsible for increasing production of skin oils, aka sebum. It's responsible for skin cell proliferation, and IGF-1 and sex hormones inhibit skin cell separation, all of which are direct causes of chronic acne. Second problem with pizza is the crust. So most pizza crust is drowned in oil, which is an issue, but I feel like we've beat the fat thing about to death, and in this case, I'm more interested in talking about the gluten. So gluten is the protein that's found in wheat products, rye, barley, and contaminates most oats unless you buy gluten-free oats. Many people in this day and age suffer from hyperpermeable intestines, which I talk a lot about in this video. And hyperpermeable intestines, i.e. leaky gut, allows partially digested gluten proteins, as well as other proteins, to make it into the bloodstream. Once they're there, a lot of people have a reaction to the gluten. I'm one of those people. I don't care how many times I've tried, whether or not it's sprouted or ancient or whatever, if I eat gluten, I break out along my jawline and mouth. It sucks because pizza and bread are miraculous creations, but I'm aware that no matter how good the bread or the pizza tastes, it's not worth the six weeks of painful cystic pimples I have to deal with afterwards. Looking and feeling my best is much better than pizza. If you have chronic acne that just won't go away, I advise you trying to be strictly gluten-free for at least eight weeks and see if you start noticing an improvement. Then you can eat gluten again, and if you break out within the next week or two, you'll know that the gluten might be triggering your breakouts. That said, gluten-free crust does exist, though many of those contain eggs, and there are vegan cheeses, although they're usually super high in fat and questionable ingredients. So if you're going to enjoy pizza, I suggest a roasted veggie kind of pizza. Little hint, use roasted pumpkin with nutritional yeast. It's effing amazing, and the combination of nourishing yourself with healthy food, feeling energized after a meal, and indulging in something so delicious without guilt is actually better than your average crappy pizza hut and slipping into a coma of self-hatred, disappointment, and constipation. Second worst food for acne ever, bacon cheeseburgers. This one you can apply to virtually all meals that contain animal flesh, fluids, or menstruations. Because all of those foods are high in fat, including artery-clogging saturated fat, way too high in acidifying protein, and packed with unnecessary exogenous cholesterol, and they contain exogenous animal hormones, including, as I'm sure you can imagine, a decent dose of the stress hormones excreted when they were being stabbed to death. All of these ingredients are responsible for a lot of the stuff that we've already talked about. Increased production of skin oils, increased sex hormone levels, high insulin, high insulin-like growth factor, kidney and liver toxicity, slow bowel transit time, the list goes on and on. But there's one thing I want to expand upon in this case. Fatty food increases intestinal permeability. That means that when we consume high fat foods, the connections between our cells that make up the wall of our small and large intestines become loose. It leaves big gaping holes, molecularly speaking, which lets all kinds of stuff through partially digested proteins like gluten and casein, and perhaps more concerning, endotoxins. Because you see, meat is completely covered in pathogenic bacteria and their toxins. We really don't want this stuff in our bodies, but it's like meat is kind of the perfect little endotoxin bomb. It's covered in bacteria and the bacteria's toxic shit. It's high in fat, boom. We invite the toxicity into our blood. So here you go, liver. Good luck with that. Too bad I've been overloading you with toxic saturated fat and cholesterol all these years. Whoops. Which brings us to the number one worst food for causing acne. The worst of the worst, you guys. Ice cream. There are some edible substances on this planet that are considered by virtually all dietary denominations to be completely fucking useless, nutritionally speaking. Ice cream is the king of these foods. 
But maybe useless isn't the right word, because useless kind of implies that it's benign. You know, like a ganglion cyst. Like, it's not pretty, but it's definitely not gonna kill you. Unfortunately, the delectable concoction of thick, fatty cream and refined sugar that is ice cream is not benign. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, it's an exact plagiarism of God's recipe for type 2 diabetes and through many of the same mechanisms as diabetes, chronic acne. If you weren't quite astute enough to have concluded that dairy is one of the worst foods for human health, or if there's still part of you that desperately needs to cling to the belief that Han Solo's ball sack wouldn't lie to us, I'll go ahead and go over this again. The dominant protein found in milk, casein, strongly stimulates the production of insulin-like growth factor 1, which stimulates sebaceous glands of the face to produce more oil while triggering more rapid skin cell division and impaired skin cell sloughing. All of this means that more gunk gets stuck in your pores and feeds bacteria. And then there's the tumor growth part of it, which does produce the pleasant aroma of irony when we consider that the strongest risk factor for prostate cancer is, uh dairy consumption. One amino acid particularly rich in cow's milk is leucine. Leucine is essential for health, but too much of a good thing can be very bad. In this case, high leucine intake overactivates the TOR enzyme, which, especially in the presence of refined sugar, promotes the development of acne, obesity, and future chronic disease. The saturated fat and cholesterol found abundantly in all dairy products are the two substances most strongly implicated in the development of atherosclerosis and impaired blood flow through small capillaries. You know, like the ones delivering oxygen and nutrients and taking away metabolic wastes in your skin. The combo of fat and refined sugar, as alluded to before, has horrendous effects on insulin regulation, which you may remember triggers inflammatory cascades involving cortisol and inflammatory cytokines. Those cause acne. A lot of people also suffer breakouts when dairy proteins found in ice cream are able to leak through the intestinal lining of the bloodstream, which happens when you eat high-fat foods, like ice cream. And if you think you'll be clever enough to just get the fat-free ice cream, well, just FYI, without the fat, there's more protein concentrated in there, and they thicken that stuff with propylene glycol, which is the first cousin of antifreeze. Yum! So basically, if you want acne, if you want type 2 diabetes, if you're interested in one day becoming obese and increasing your risk of developing and dying from cancer, by all means, stuff yourself with ice cream. If you'd prefer to liberate yourself from acne and slash your risk of chronic disease, find replacements for dairy and other animal foods. Luckily, there's this thing called nice cream. You can make it with frozen bananas and a blender. It's amazing with strawberries. It is to die for with chocolate. Like from cacao powder, like not like, like the fat-free stuff. And since it's a whole plant food, it is totally 100% guilt and cruelty free. I love win-win situations. I really, truly do. If you have any questions about why these foods cause acne, you gotta watch the rest of the acne series. If you wanna know exactly what you gotta do to follow the protocol I'm recommending, you're gonna wanna watch this video. Technically, these two videos, because it's part one and two. But if not, please leave questions and comments below, and do not forget to subscribe for more legit content. Until next time, make better choices for yourself and take really, really good care. I will see you soon.